In this chapter, we learn about discrete probability distributions. First, let us see some definitions which will be used in all the discrete probability distributions. These definitions are very important. Discrete random variable, the first one. What is a discrete random variable? If a variable x takes real values x corresponding to each outcome of a random experiment, it is called random variable. And discrete means it assumes finite or countably infinite real values. We will see in the examples. So what is a discrete random variable? It takes discrete values corresponding to different outcomes of the random experiment. See this example. X is the number of heads in the toss of two coins where the sample space is already written. What are the outcomes or points in the sample space? HH, HT, TH and TT. What is the definition of X? Number of heads. So what are the values of X corresponding to different outcomes? Corresponding to this outcome it is 2, 1, 1. In this there is no head so 0. Or you can treat this variable like a function corresponding to the point HH of the sample space its value is 2 corresponding to HT its value is 1 TH1 and TT 0 ok so values of X depend on the definition of X I could define it number of tails also in that case if X is the number of tails then X HH would be 0. Right. So a random variable has a definition and accordingly it gets values. So you can see here X can take three values 0, 1, 2. You want to write it like this X takes three values 0, 1, 2. Discrete random variable is clear. Okay. Next is probability mass function. What is probability mass function? Suppose a random variable x takes real values x corresponding uh, with probabilities px equal to x. Then the function fx equal to this probability x equal to x is called PM of fx provided fx is non-negative for all x and sum of all values of fx is 1. So what is PMF? Probability mass function is a function of the random variable x That is always non-negative because it gives probabilities. Second, it gives probability for each value of x. And third, sum of all values of fx is 1. The non-negative function fx of the random variable x is pm of fx. If, if it gives probability for each value of x and sum of all values of fx is 1. Let us see in this example what is PMF. x takes three different values 0, 1, 2. Let's calculate the probabilities for different values of x. You can denote it by fx. What are the values? What is the probability for x equal to 0? Probability of getting no head. 
वन बाई फोर प्रॉबर्टी ऑफ गेटिंग वन हेड देर आर टू पॉइंट और टू ओवर फोर और यू कैन राइट वन ओवर टू एंड द प्रॉबर्टी ऑफ गेटिंग बोथ हेड्स ओनली वन केस जीरो कॉरस्पॉन्ड्स टू दिस बोथ हेड्स दिस केस वन ओवर फोर राइट सो दिस फंक्शन देन एफ जीरो इज वन ओवर फोर एफ वन इज टू ओवर फोर एंड एफ टू इज वन ओवर फोर इट इज पी एम एफ ऑफ दिस रैंडम वेरिएबल इट गिवस प्रॉबर्टी फॉर इच वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स एंड यू कैन चेक सम ऑफ दीज थ्री वैल्यूज इज वन सो इट सेटिस्फाइज the conditions for pmf so it is pmf of the random variable x okay next is cdf cdf cumulative distribution function what is this function sum of probabilities up to given value of x sum of the probabilities up to given values of x cumulative means you are just adding the probabilities in this example what is cdf what is f0 up to 0 what is the probability 1 over 4 up to 1 add these two x less than equal to x If x is one, it means you will add these two properties at zero as well as one. What do you get? Three over four. Capital F two means up to two. Whatever probabilities are there, add all those values, so you get one. So this is CDF in this case. Also, this we call probability distribution. Probability. distribution probability distribution why because these are various possible values of x and these are the probabilities for different values this shows you how probability is distributed among various values of x okay so this is also called probability distribution to display all values of the random variable along with their probabilities it's the probability distribution okay so this thing i have already written there cumulative distribution function is clear now see this example a fair coin is tossed again and again till head appears if x denotes the number of tosses in this experiment find pmf and cdf of x x denotes the number of tosses the definition changes here x denotes the number of tosses number of tosses till head appears first time so what are possible values of x here first you have to write that for pmf and then the corresponding probabilities it is possible that head appears in the first toss itself so x can take the value 1 maybe in the second toss third toss and so on what is the outcome corresponding to 1 head itself first tail then head that is the meaning of x equal to 2 tail tail head it is possible that head appears in the third attempt or third toss so you can easily write the probabilities fx or px equal to x what is the probability of getting head here 1 over 2 first tail then head both are independent events you can multiply the probabilities 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 1 by 2 square One by two cube, similarly, and so on. So this gives the PMF. 
of the random variable x. How to write CDF? Add the probabilities. Up to the given value of x. But you can write fx, small fx as well as the capital fx function in compact form. How can you write it? 1 over 2 power x, where x goes from 1 to 3 and so on. What is capital fx? Sum of the probabilities up to x. This is the definition, right? Sum of probabilities up to x means 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 square and so on. 1 over 2 power x. It is a zp. So what is the sum of this zp? 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 power x. 2 power x over 1 minus 1 over 2. So you are left with 1 minus 1 over 2 power x. This is CDF. Okay, so this is how you can show PMF as well as CDF. You see the definition of random variable here. Accordingly, you have written the values, then the corresponding probabilities. Okay, next example a shipment of 20 similar computers to a retail outlet. Contains three defective computers. If a school makes a random purchase of two of these computers, find the probability distribution of the number of defectives. So what is X here? Number of defectives. X is number of defective computers. What are possible values of x? How many computers are purchased? 2. So it is possible that there is no defective computer. 1, 2. Now write the probabilities for different values of x because you need probability distribution. Of the defectives, x equal to 0 means what? There is no defective. See, there is total number of computers is 20. Out of those 20, 3 are defective. If no defective is there, it means both the computers are okay, not defective. So those are coming from 17 non-defective computers. So cho choosing two non-defective computers from 17 is this one number of ways total number of ways is 22c2 x equal to 1 means one defective one non-defective 17c1 into 3c1 there are three defectives one defective is coming one non-defective so these many ways divided by 20 C2. Both defectives, both are coming from the three defective computers. So this is the probability. You can calculate it further. Okay, so this is the probability distribution in this case. Calculations are given here. You can verify. Now find probability distribution of the number of ads in a toss of 4 coins. Number of ads. This time x denotes the number of ads in toss of 4 coins. What are different possible values of x? No hat, 1 hat, 2 hat, 3 hats, 4 hats. These are possible values. What is the probability of getting no head out of 4? In how many ways there is no or how many cases? 4 is 0 divided by how many total points in the sample space? 
Four coins are tossed. How many sample points? Sixteen. Okay. Probability of getting one hat. 4c1 over 16. Likewise, you can write. You can write this function in compact form also. 4cx over 16. Where x goes from 0 to 4. So this is how you can write distribution in this case. Calculations are given here. You can verify. It is also asking plot of PMF and probability histogram. So plot means simply plot this function, show these discrete points in x fx plane. So these points you are seeing one, 0, 1 by 16, first point, then next point. So these uh, discrete points are shown, okay. So this is plot of fx and this is the histogram. Take the middle point and just make these rectangles. Okay. Next is expectation. Next definition. Very, very important definition. Fourth one. What is expectation of a random variable? Multiply the values of the random variable with the corresponding probabilities and add. This expression defines expectation of x. If x is a discrete random variable with PMFF, then the expectation of x denoted by Ex is defined as this summation. Okay. Why is it defined like this? You will understand. In general, expectation of any function of x. This is also a key definition for arbitrary function of the random variable. What is expectation? Multiply the function hx with fx and add over all value of x. In fact, expectation x is the mean value of x. Why? You can verify it easily. Suppose xi are values of x and fi are the corresponding frequencies. So how do you calculate mean? Multiply these values with the frequency and divide by the total frequency. Am I right? This gives the mean value of x. How can I write it? Xi into Fi over summation Fi. So what is this expression? This is the frequency with which Xi is occurring. And this is the total. So it is in fact probability of Xi. You can write it Xi probability of Xi or you can write Fxi. So what is it? Same thing that we are seeing here. So mean value of x is nothing but expectation of x. You can see here also. Expectation x is mean value of x. See this example here x denotes the number of ads in a toss of two fair coins. Find ex and ex square. So how to do it? For EX what do you need? The probability distribution. What are different values in this case for X? Toss of two fair coins. Zero hat, one hat, both hats. Probabilities are 1 by 4, 1 by 2, 1 by 4. Now what is expectation of X? How to calculate it? Multiply different values of x with their corresponding probabilities. Likewise, if I need ex square, then what to do? Square the values of x everywhere. 
zero square into one by four, one square into one by two plus two square into one by four. Here you can say it is your hx, and hx is x square, so x square comes as it is. So you can calculate these. First one is one, second one is three over two. These are some useful properties of expectation. Very easy to verify. Expectation of some constant is the constant itself. Why? You can see from here if it is constant, it is a. A comes outside. Summation of f x is one because f x is p m f. So you are left with a. Similarly, you can verify e of a x is a times c x. And expectation apply linearly. If if it is e of a x plus b where a and b are constants, then it it is equal to e a times c x plus b. You can use these properties directly wherever you need these. Now see this example. A load containing seven components is sampled by a quality inspector. The load contains four good components and three defective components. A sample of three is taken by the inspector. Find the expected value of the number of good components. Again, we should focus on the definition of x. What is the definition of x here? Number of good components. Sample of three is taken. How many good components? Four good components. Sample of three is taken. It means all of three can be good. Good, correct. So what are different values of x in this case? Zero good component. One, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Then you need to write the probabilities for different values of x. How to write these? You can write your f x in general here. Seven components are sampled. Four are good. Three are defective. Okay, x denotes the number of good. No good means. Three C zero. I'm writing in general. Three C X. Okay. No, three are defective. Four are good. So X is denoting the number of good components. Okay. So four C X remain remaining are coming from three. So you can say three C. Three minus x. This is the total number of ways of selecting good components out of the given seven items divided by seven c x. No, not seven c x. It's seven c three. So total is three. Four C X into three C three three minus X over seven C three. X goes from zero to three. So you can fill these values. Okay, you can calculate where X equal to zero, one, two, and three. After finding these values, what is required here? Expected value of the number of good components means you need E X. You need this one. But of course, this calculation will change. So you can calculate E X. How multiply these x values with their corresponding properties? That you will find using this formula. So it is a matter of calculation. You can do it yourself. You can check the answer here. It's one point seven. Different values after calculation are written here. See this example now. It's a good problem. Read it. A salesperson for a medical device company has two appointments on a given day. At the first appointment, he believes that he has a seventy percent chance to make the deal, from which he can earn one thousand dollar commission. If successful, on the other hand, he thinks 
he only has a 40% chance to make the deal at the second appointment from which if successful he can make $1500. What is the expected commission based on his own probability belief? Assume that the appointment results are independent of each other. Again the first point is how to define X here. How to define X. Expected commission. Hmm? So what should be X? Commission in dollars. So what are different possible values of X after reading this statement? No commission, I'm writing in dollars. No commission, $1,000, $1,500 and $2,500. These are basically the earnings which are possible. Okay. So these are different values of x. Now what are the probabilities? Next step is to write the probability for each value of x. What are the chances that there is no earning? So what are the chances for earning $1000 commission? 70% and for $1500 it's 40%. So nowhere is successful. The salesperson is not successful. What does it mean? Probability of earning no commission is 0.3 into 0.6. Am I right? You see, for earning $1,000, there are 70% chances. For earning $1,500, 40%. None of these. Both are independent. Multiply the probabilities. Correct? For 1000, first successful, second failure, 0 0.7 into 0 0.6. For 1500, first failure, 0 0.3, second success, 0 0.4. For 2500, both successes, 0 0.7 into 0 0.4. Four. Correct. So you, you have written the probability distribution of x. You can easily calculate the x now. Just multiply these values of x with the corresponding fx values and see what we get. What do you get? In your calculations, you should get. $1,300. Check the calculations that are written. Corresponding to 0, it is 0.18. Corresponding to 2500, it is 0.28. 1000, 0 0.42, 1500, 0 0.12. So it's correct. Next, number of cars X that pass through a car wash between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. on any sunny Friday has the following probability distribution. The probability distribution is already given here. X is defined here, the number of cars. Let GX equal to 2X minus 1 represent the amount of money in dollars paid to the attendant by the manager. Find the attendance expected earnings for this particular time period. It's very clear that you need expectation of GX. Correct? You need expectation of GX. So there are two ways of doing it. One is that you write it in this manner. Expectation 2X minus 1. Apply the linearity property. You can write EX minus 1. 
two times e x minus one. E x you can calculate from here. Multiply these values of x with the corresponding f x values, and add, substitute that value here. You will get the answer. Second one is you calculate two x minus one from here itself, and multiply with the corresponding f x values. If you don't want to apply linearity property, okay. So either way, you should get this answer: twelve point six seven dollars. Next is variance. Variance gives the mathematical measure of the deviation of data from the central value. See, suppose you have two. Values of x four and six. Four and six. What is the mean value of these two? Five. Here four. Here six. Mean value is five. Suppose two values of x are one and nine. One and nine. Again, the mean value is five. In this case, mean value is five. Above case, also mean value is five. So from mean value, you cannot just how various values of x are scattered around the central value. Okay. So for this purpose, another statistical measure is defined that is called variance. It gives the mathematical measurement of deviation of the different values of x from the central value or the mean value. How is it defined? If x is a random variable with mean e x equal to mu, then its variance denoted by v x or sigma square is defined as the expectation of expectation of x minus mu whole square. Expectation of x minus mu whole square. You can simplify it further, as shown here, using the linearity property of expectation. You get a simplified formula: e x square minus e x whole square. Very very useful formula for finding variance. You can write v x or you can write it sigma square. Okay. So variance of x is defined as expectation of x minus mu whole square. A simplified formula is e x square minus e x whole square. So in this example, you can see how to find variance. If x denotes the number of hairs in a toss of two fair coins, then e x equal to one, e x square equal to three by two. You have already seen it earlier. So how to get variance in this case? E x square is three over two minus e x all square one over one over two. So just you need to keep this formula in your mind. After that, if you know how to calculate expectation for any function of x, it's easy to tell the variance. Uh, easy to do the variance calculation. Okay. Here are some properties, some useful properties of variance. That you can look at. If x is a random variable and a and b are constants, then variance of a is zero. Variance of a constant is zero. Why variance of a constant is zero? You can see here in this formula also variance of a constant. E a square minus a square. What do you get? For constant expectation is same, get zero. Constant, each value of x is a constant, so there is no variation at all. Variations of a x is a square b x. Why? Because of the square, you will get a square outside, and b of a x plus b is a square b x. So these are some useful properties regarding variance. Next is standard deviation. Standard deviation. What is standard deviation? Standard deviation is 
square root of variance positive square root of variance then denoted by sigma or square root of variance now the question is why do we define just as the square root of variance as standard deviation what is the need of defining another statistical measure for the same thing because it also tells you the deviation from the central value see if your data your data values are say in centimeter you are dealing with some data which is given in centimeter 1 centimeter 2 centimeter 5 centimeter like this so if you calculate variance your answer of variation would be variance would be in centimeter square so you say that the deviation is in centimeter square that probably doesn't make much sense but if you take its square root then you say okay this much deviation is there from the central value so it matches with the unit of the given data okay that's why it is defined separately okay so positive square root of the variance is standard deviation denoted by sigma now you understand why it is denoted by sigma square so that standard deviation becomes sigma okay see this example let the random variable x represent the number of automobiles that are used for official business purposes on any given work day the probability distribution for company a is this for company b is this probability distributions are given what is needed show that the variance of the probability distribution for company b is greater than that for company a so it's a matter of calculation calculate variance for company a and for company b here means are also given now you don't need mean but mean comes automatically when you calculate ex so mean is there okay so you are seeing here sigma a square is 0.6 sigma b square is 1.6 so for company b it is greater variance is greater okay so what do you need uh, for these calculations for sigma a square you calculate ex and ex square using this distribution and use this formula for variance see the next example calculate the variance of gx equal to 2x plus 3 means you need variance of 2x plus 3 where distribution is given below so again there are two ways either you calculate 2x plus 3 and then calculate expectation of this random variable another way is you use the property you can write it four times variance of x okay so from this you can use this distribution directly the answer is 4 for the variance for mean answer is 6 okay verify these answers from your calculations they should be easy for you now look at this example find the mean and variance of a random variable x with the pmf given by fx equal to cx x goes from 1 to n x goes from 1 to n where c is a constant and n is some fixed natural number so what to do mean is required but c is unknown here first you need to find c fix your c what to do for finding c it is given that fx is pmf and pmf has a feature that sum of all values over the pmf is 1 you know it right sum of all values of the pmf is 1 what does that mean summation fx over all values of x in this case x goes from 1 to n is 1 so using this condition if 
can write c time because c is a constant c times x from 1 to n x equal to 1 so sum from 1 to n that means what n into n plus 1 over 2 am i right so from this you are able to get c c is 1 over 2 over n into n plus 1 so you can see that c is 2 over n into n plus 1 c is found you know the fx now calculate ex and ex square from it what is ex ex means mean how to calculate it by definition summation c times summation x fx x fx fx is itself x so x square correct you can do this calculation yourself you can calculate mean you will find it to n plus 1 over 3 e x square you will find n into n plus 1 over 2 whole square okay not whole square that, that, that would be the summation of means in that case you will have summation c times x cube so you know those summations right okay so you can verify these answers yourself i think it's easy i need not to explain it further find ex then ex square then use the formula of variance see i have already explained to you that how to get it by the calculations using the fact that fx is pmr okay now see this example consider a random variable x with the pmf given by this again c is unknown here you know how to get c because it is pmf so using the pmf condition you can get c after that what is asked if gx is this then show that expectation of gx exists but expectation of mode gx doesn't exist even if you don't find c it doesn't matter in this case because the problem is show that expectation of gx exists but expectation of mode gx doesn't exist so how to find expectation of gx multiply gx by x and do the summation over the given values of x so see what do you get expectation of gx means summation gx fx c you will find 1 over 2 in this case using this condition you can check it though it is not needed for the problem but you have found it's fine so when gx is multiplied with fx fx means this one multiplied with this gx this is the expression this exists but the expectation of mod of gx doesn't exist this is the problem so why it exists and why it doesn't exist see this is an infinite series in fact it is alternating series of the type minus 1 power n minus 1 minus 1 power n minus 1 over 2 into 2 n minus 1 what is a n here record from your previous course of mathematics 1 this is decreasing going to 0 so by Leibniz test this series is convergent but once you take modulus of it you are left with this series and this series is divergent why here an is an is same but after taking modulus okay that an is we are using this part only here okay you can take mod an no problem mod an is or mod of this whole expression 
is this one modulus of this is this so this is my here now okay okay now I need to put modulus here this is a different series okay don't confuse with the symbols actually I, for this I am using this notation minus 1 power n minus 1 here and this is only summation here okay so this is divergent why it is divergent choose bn equal to 1 over n then take a n over bn what do you get 1 over 2 into 2 minus 1 over n this goes to 1 over 4 as n tends to infinity recall the comparison test so by comparison test both series have the same behavior but this series is a p series p series with p equal to 1 correct hope you are recalling this so it is divergent hence the given this this series is also is also divergent so the thing is that expectation of a function of x need not exist this example shows that expectation may or may not exist for a given random variable even though the distribution function is well defined next is moments what are moments moment of a random variable x kf moment in fact of a random variable x is defined as expectation of x power k if fx is the pmf of x then you can write x power k fx some overall values of x this is defined as kth moment of x in fact it is the moment about x equal to 0 let me define kth moment about arbitrary point then you will understand why is it called moment so how to define it kth moment of the random variable x about a point about a given point a is defined as expectation of x minus a whole power k so you can calculate it using this formula but question is that why is it called moment x minus a whole power k a is any point from this you are taking differences of various values of x and then taking kth power so in this power how much deviation of various values of x is there from the given point a means how much the moment of the given data is there that is that is why it is given the name moment how much the data is moving about the point a moment in the sense kind of deviation from the given point in fact, if I choose a equal to mu, the mean value of x, and I choose k equal to 2, what is it? It's the variance of x, isn't it? Recall the definition of variance. So variance is nothing but second moment of x, second moment of x about the mean. So moments give you also the measurement of deviation but in different powers okay these these moments have, uh, are very useful when you study statistics further okay you will not be using much you will be using in discrete distributions in some calculations but these are very useful so moments are defined in general okay so kth moment of the random variable x about the point a is defined using this formula or you can say it is expectation of x minus a whole power k can be calculated using this 
summation formula. What is this? This is kth moment about about the point zero, or you can also call it ordinary moment. This is ordinary moment. <clears throat> this is the moment about any point. By the way, what is first moment of first moment of x about the mean? You can calculate it. Expectation x minus mu. Mu is a constant. Expectation x is again mu. So mu minus mu. What do you get? Zero. First moment of x about its mean is zero. Second moment is variance. So you can make a note of these points. Definition is shown here. X is a random variable. K is any positive integer. Then expectation of x power k defines the kth ordinary moment of x. Next is moment generating function. Very very important definition. What is moment generating function? It is defined as expectation of e power t x denoted by m x t moment generating function. Denoted by m x t defined as expectation of e power t x. Why is it called moment generating function? See, write the expansion of e power t x one plus t x plus one over two factorial t square x square and so on. For expectation t is a constant. X is the variable, so you can apply expectation linearly here and see. Expectation of one is one, t plus t times expectation of x plus one over two factorial t square expectation x square and so on. So what are you seeing here? Expectation is appearing in the product of various powers of t. So this function is basically generating. The moments, various moments. This is first moment, first ordinary moment, second ordinary moment, and so on. If you differentiate this function k times, if you differentiate this function k times with respect to t, and then put t equal to zero. What do you get? Check it yourself. You will get the kth moment. Very useful formula. If we differentiate the moment generating function k times with respect to t and then put t equal to zero, we get the kth moment. You can check for the first one. If I differentiate it one time, what is left on the right side? Zero plus e x plus t times e x square and so on. So all other terms are carrying t. If I put t equal to zero, I am left with e x only. So first derivative at t equal to zero gives the first moment. Correct. Likewise, you can check second derivative at t equal to zero gives the second moment. So moment generating function provides you all the moments. That's why it is the moment generating function. Okay, so these are the definitions that I have discussed in this lecture, and these are common to all the discrete distributions that we'll be doing further. So we'll be using these in further lectures in the discrete distributions. So see these again. I written here at one place what is discrete random variable a random variable that takes discrete values or values corresponding to each outcome of the random experiment it can have any definition according to the definition it takes values pmf means probability mass function 
if function f x is probability mass function of of x if it gives probability for each value of x and sum of all values of f x is what and this is of course two because it gives probabilities probability is never negative third see the cumulative distribution function means sum of all values of f x up to given value of x denoted by capital f x fourth expectation of x expectation of x means summation f summation x times f x means multiply the various values of the random variable with the corresponding probabilities and add here you should also know this definition expectation of any function of x is given by summation overall value of x hx fx replace this x by hx the function of x so expectation of any function of x is defined in this manner then variance is defined as expectation of x minus mu whole square but a simplified formula is ex square minus ex whole square standard deviation is just positive square root of the variance it is sigma or positive square root of vx this formula you need to keep in mind for variance next moments what are moments moment the kth moment of the random variable x about zero or we can say the ordinary moment of x kth ordinary moment of x is defined as expectation of x power k can be simplified using this formula then moment genetic function moment genetic function of x is defined as expectation of e power t x okay and its kth derivative where t equal to 0 gives the kth moment this is a useful formula okay so these are very important definitions that we will be using in discrete distributions so be ready with these definitions in the next lecture okay thank you